Hænder fyldt i sælgen Hvert væk vinden i årsæggen Hænder lærning det så helt Hænder split second Yeah, I only freaked up once with continuation when I had like my jacket left off, going through everything. It's like, oh, it's not in the video though. Oh yeah. <laughs> Twenty names in the credits. Not bad for uh, only telling a couple people to do it like the day before. Well, I didn't want a bunch of random people showing up like that were like troublemakers. It's like, we'll get the people that are going to show up that day or people that are going to want to be there. Logan like a statue there. <laughs> the Johnny Cash. <laughs> oh god. Hopefully he gets a kiss from this one at least. His first music video. Someone wants to get a kiss from at least. <laughs> you guys walking through the doors? So yeah. funny. <laughs> Fellow that failed four times. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know when I watched when I watched the video myself for the first time. I didn't know that I, you were recording for some stuff I'm in. Like that's the best. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys have this new video out this week. Yep. And we just saw a little bit of uh, behind the scenes clips and a little bit of additional commentary in there. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Let's do what we do best. So uh, getting a little bit of fresh air, you guys are getting ready to pack up and leave my hometown. Yeah. So we're leaving. Whenever this is released, we're leaving uh, June 4th. We're going to leave... Um, Mid-afternoon after we rehearse and then build a bunk in the back of the uh, Jean-Claude Van Van. We're getting the new stereo installed this weekend. Friday. Friday. It'd be weird to actually hear, because right now, like, for the last, uh, so for the last couple years, since we got the van, basically what we've been doing is we've been just, like, taking a Bose little, like, yes. thing or whatever. Bluetooth speaker. Bluetooth speaker and just putting it in the front in one of the cup holders. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we're unplugging it to plug a phone in or, like, it's just dying because it's not plugged in all the way and then every once in a while the cd player will just come on out of nowhere and it's, it's taylor hawkins cd is stuck in it oh really that's so awesome it kind of works out yeah actually it came on uh when taylor hawkins passed away it was like yeah. that night yeah. it just turned back on like that too it was yeah it was, that stuff always happens though that's that's the part of touring that's all the good things all the signs and like this tour i don't think it'll be any different because we're going into new territory and we haven't been to the BC yet, and we're gonna go. We got a couple dates there. We got dates along the way. We're gonna go to Seattle uh, to see Cobain's cool. memorial underneath the bridge there. So that's something that is like I'm looking forward to that just as much as all the dates we're playing. It's just about getting on the road with the guys. Like we've done the Nirvana tribute over the years, and seeing all this together, just making the uh, making the memories with the boys and getting silly on the road. Yeah. But yeah, like we, we play in Toronto for Canadian Music Week. We got a date in Montreal. 
I date in Winnipeg, uh, Saskatoon, Edmonton, Calgary, Revelstoke, two dates in Van Vancouver, and then, uh, then we're back to play Shoebox and um, Steinhardt Distillery. So those are our two dates. we got to leave Edmonton on the 18th, and we play the 23rd. So we're going to get back and be pretty tired. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's so the 25th, or like the day of the 25th and the 26th, I think we're all just going to sleep. Catch up on some Z's Perfect. and see what, uh, see what kind of damage this tour does on us mentally and physically. Who, who gets to do all the drive and you all trade off? I do a lot of it. Yeah? Just because, I don't know, I'm just like, I like to keep focused and time goes quicker when behind the wheel. Andre has a tendency of just being like, okay, no, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to get tired, so we'll just pull over rather than like switch. Oh, yeah. Out. He likes to be behind the wheel. Perfect. And, uh, remain nameless, but there's, you know, there's a couple people that go behind the wheel that I'm just like, holy shit, I wish Andre was driving. So. <laughs> and I, I don't like driving on like the six lane highways. And yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. So like I'll, I'll take over in certain areas where it's a little bit more of that backcountry style things. But I think the only person that ever actually fell asleep while driving <laughs> was uh, me. Perfect. So. On the way home, I think I was on like a nine hour shift and Mark's like, I'll, I'll take over for a bit. So we take over. Them fall to sleep. I'm looking at him. <laughs> it was it me or Travis that just took the wheels to pull over. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things we got to get from Toronto to Winnipeg, which is a 21 hour drive, but we don't have like time to sleep in between. So that's the kind of thing we're gonna be doing couple of the dates but this time we have like spots to stay we're not going to sleep in the van the whole time there's only like two nights we're going to stay in the van as we drive well and that's as we're driving too yeah. like we're not going to be really pulling over unless there's a nice uh gas station full of pigs funny story we went to record our last album before years ago today was the memory that we got yeah. that we started at no fools no fun and on the way out we stopped over i think it was the quebec border and uh Irving or big big stop parking lot, you start trying to go to sleep, and there's pigs, like literal pigs, not like what yeah. people call cops. It was like, ah, ah. and rather than us just leaving and finding somewhere else to go, we just like suffered through it. So that's that's a horror story. Hopefully, yeah. they uh, well we were there first, and then they and then they came in or whatever, but. And none of us thought to take it like a sound bite for the album or anything. Oh, like that's that, too bad. Which is unfortunate. Like they were obviously going to the slaughterhouse, and they obviously knew that they were yeah, going to the slaughterhouse because yeah. yeah, they they wouldn't shut up. The sound of terror. Would it get? Would have made a good metal album though. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. You know. But you guys did recently have a <laughs> run in with the police. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of pigs, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we want to shout out to our new cop friend David Thorne. Uh, I wanted to say Chris Thorne because we worked with Christopher Thorne and Blind Melon before, and that last name. Well, I was thinking about it, but I was at first I was cranky and I was like pissed off because it was four in the morning. I'm in these red Adidas track pants from the '90s, and he made me he made me sit on the ground. I'm like, fuck, dude, I don't want to get these pants dirty. We're at like this place that uh, our friend gave us for the night. Long story short, we were given this house for the night while our friend uh, photographer Scott Lag was in Moncton. So this is his workhouse throughout the week. Uh, we get in around, what, three, start unloading our gear that we needed to for the night. And I was literally joking 20 minutes before that. I'm like, boys, if someone comes to break into the van, we got to fucking stab them. <laughs> so Americans certainly were told this. I actually told the cop this story. Yeah, that, was, that was not smart. <laughs> so basically what happened, like, I was, uh, I was on the couch in the living room area. And uh, so I was on the couch in the living room area. And what was going on was um, as... Like, I'm a pretty light sleeper when I'm close to the van. So, I was like, I think somebody's by our van. Like, somebody's outside right now. And I got up and I was like, boys, there's somebody at our fucking van. And obviously, you're on the road. You're thinking somebody's trying to break in, right? Especially, like, areas. And, uh, yeah, areas. Um, so, I, like, jumped up or whatever. I was looking out the window. I was like, he has a flashlight. That's a cop. Boys, there's a fucking cop at our van. Andre's like, what? He gets up, goes, opens the door, and as soon as he opens the door, it's like, hands where I can see them, you know, co come out here, down on the ground, like... Miscreants. Oh, right yeah. It's not often, someone mentioned it the other day, it's not often that 
if people think someone's breaking into a place, they're not bringing stuff in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, place. yeah, yeah, exactly. But, I mean, it's like what he said, all like uh, what Officer Thorne said, like all in the day's work or whatever, like you big, big white van uh, yeah. from a different province pulling up. For sure. Uh, five guys trying to figure out how to get into a place. So. Yeah, I could see how that could definitely raise some alarms for the neighbors if they're not 100% sure. Yeah. We're, we're cold as, like, cold as hell outside, too, and it's, like, I was it, it, it's, it's freezing. <laughs> so, yeah, Dre is, like, in a sleeveless shirt, probably that shirt, and, like, his red, like, track pants or whatever out there. We're all outside. Before I went outside, I was, like, we're all getting detained, so fuck this. Took the pajama pants off and, uh, you know, threw the jeans on, threw the shirt, then the flannel, then Looked the sweater, the and then the, je the jean jacket. I was like, then I went outside, and eventually he was nice enough to allow me to go inside and grab Andre's, like, jacket and sweater and stuff like that. So, oh, there you go. Yeah. Courtesy. We, we, we did have him laughing within, like, a half an hour, and he kind of clued in that it was, you know. It was mis all a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, miscommunication and such, and uh, super nice guy. Still for that night. Oh yeah, thorn in our sides. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. It's the song on the next album. We haven't started to write it yet, but he's gonna be. Uh, he wants to be in the video when it does happen. There you go. You got to do it. So we've we've got our cop for the video, and we'll just have to kind of maybe we'll just reenact the actual scene. That's kind of like what we. Well, that's kind of what like we did for Dweeb in the sense of making it our own. Yeah. But it's it's a time where I accidentally cut my own hair. But my nephew, who played me in the video, wanted to get a bowl cut. Yes, it was pretty good, too. Like, he's like, I asked him a couple months ago, I was like, do you want to play, like, a high school me in a video? He's like, yeah, sure. I was like, you got to have a stupid haircut for it. He's like, can I get a bowl cut? So I'm like, well, if someone asks you a bowl cut, you know, you got you to sharpen yes. up your skills and get those scissors to work. So that's what happened. He came out with this yellow bowl, like a mixing bowl or whatever. Threw it on his head. I got a five-minute haircut. Looked fantastic. Best bowl cut I ever gave. Awesome. <laughs> you, you, you nailed the look for the video anyway. <laughs> I wish he would have kept it, but he, as soon as the shoot was done, he was it's, pretty adamant uh, on getting it go. cut. I was talking to him just before he left, and I asked him if he was going to keep it for a while, and he said it was going immediately. He didn't even want to go home with it. So. Well, that's, yeah. He was like, we got to get this cut tonight. So. <laughs> that's awesome. Where, where is yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that bowl is. I th I think we should get him to sign the bowl and put it on I like, think so. put it on a pedestal for, or so. auction it off online. There you we're go. Gonna I'm gonna one of those things where like for the album fundraiser. Oh, like our Indiegogo campaign that's coming while we're on the road. You heard it here first. We've got some fun stuff coming. Mark's sticks that he used on every single track for the upcoming album. We've got game worn T Willie shorts that he wore at uh, Blacktop Ball last year. Yeah. So whoever bids the Least amount gets the shorts. <laughs> we just so just take them out of our hand. Yeah, you have to bid more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he uh, he's got a new set ready for this summer for Giant Stock, and he's also got a new bass. He, Travis has been playing with this super small bass. Little Rocket. Yeah, he named it Little Rocket. I think he used it in the video, but he's he's preparing to smash that this summer. I'm like, we like that one, you know. He bought the bass that he smashed last summer while we were in Sweden. Another tour thing, it was like 4.30 in the morning, we just got back, we shut down Orbro again, because we were the last ones up, and Travis laughing in bed, <laughs> I just bought a bass. That's that's the kind of thing, I'm wondering what he's going to buy this time, he's got a little bit of a uh, streak in him that he's just kind of impulsive, he'll worry about stuff, and then it's just boom, buy something in a row. Well, I was just selling my bass like a week ago or two weeks ago. I was like, I'm, 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 think, I'm thinking about selling my bass. And Travis is like, how much? And I was like, ah, oh, probably like 250 Next thing I know, my phone goes off. Bloop, e-transfer. <laughs> yeah. That is a cool bass, though. It's a fretless bass. Yeah. We'll have to get Travis to come on when you guys get back from the tour yeah. so that we can find out what he did. Yep. That, that oh, be a yeah, the recap. To this. Totally. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the most interesting part is seeing what happens, like, it's it's like watching a, like a train crash, you know what I mean? Like it's like I, I'm, I'm, let's let's throw bids out there right now. All right, like guesses. He's gonna buy something for his camera. Yeah, I'm gonna say he's going to probably. I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say a base, but probably a strap. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna probably buy some Pokemon games. Probably some Pokemon games or some sort of video games. Definitely a lot of Subway. 
Yeah. If there's anybody out there that like does sponsorships for Subway, Travis could really use one. He spends like twenty bucks daily there. Even if you give him like a half off thing, like more than twenty. Yeah. yeah. He he's got to get that Adam Sandler uh, Happy Gilmore sponsorship. <laughs> I eat two of these every day. Hey, Happy, can I have one? Coming right up. Boom. You know, lands in the mouth. When you guys do get back, yeah. when's the album out? We are dropping our album on July 7th. So we're going to be announcing that full tour uh, while we're on the road. We've got, I just finished up the graphics for it today. We've just got a lot of stuff going on. So it's like, we got to promote one thing and then pro- promote the next while we're doing it. Because it's, it's a slippery slope with social media. Yeah. To, you got to kind of find a balance where it's like, you got to engage with proper things. You don't want to throw everything down someone's throat, but you got to let them know what's going on. Yeah. So we have like a day off on the tour where we're going to go live and we're going to chat about stuff. And then we'll, we'll launch our summer tour then. Um, the first date is actually in Shelburne at Boxing Rock. We cool. played there a couple times and they wanted us back. They're fantastic. That opening weekend. Then we're playing Lightship in Lunenburg that weekend. We've never been there, but they, I heard great things. And then I'm, uh, I'm actually heading to PEI the following weekend to check out another festival that um, that was high on my radar just to check out, and it's called Somo Fest. That'll be a blast. Yeah. And then we've got uh, the Carlton and F- Furkenstein the following weekend. Then we do start some New Brunswick dates, PEI, and then August. I'm not going to tell you all about August, but we've got some more l- local-ish dates. And then Giant Stock in September. So that's like our only local date for the album release. We've got our single release at Shoebox Studio as soon as we get back. And then our only local date for this summer is there. And we've got like three days of super fun planned. And And then I'm sure everybody knows about it by now anyway. I've seen lots of coverage online. But I I don't think we talked about it much on this podcast yet. So what's the lineup? Oh, you got so, it memorized. I know you can. The so Giant Stock <laughs> is uh, three days of music, camping, and petty positivity, and we've got uh, petty positivity is a great word. I, I'm glad I made it up. <laughs> but we've got um, Saturday is going to start. We've got a songwriter circle. So I've got myself, um, Morgan, Tony, Ian Camp is going to be there for that, and then we're going to join Ian. So me and Mark are um, a part of Ian's trio. We had our f- first little... The trio. The trio, yeah. So if you're from, like, Cape Jack or Linwood, it's, a, it's not a trio or it's a trio. It was originally a trio until someone couldn't pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, a trio, bud. <laughs> and then we got some, uh, our local buds that are uh, just released a new EP as well. Um, Why Go? Mark produced their album. So they're going to be on the Saturday bill. And then we've got Sweet Serene... Some more friends of ours. Then we got ourselves, and we got Slow Coaster, who is like awesome. They're a band that really got me into playing a lot of more local venues. They hop, let me hop on some of their bills and helped out that as I was like a 16 to 19 year old. So that's the Saturday, and then Sunday we've got uh, 90s Throwback Night. So we've got ourselves, Sweet Serene, and Not Like Yesterday, and we're working on just. A bunch of 90s tunes. We've got our friends, Altered by Mom, who are coming in from Ontario. And they're pretty well ready to hop on to anything there. We've also got Dougie Snakes, who's a comedian. And if you don't know him, you, I suggest you check him out. He's friggin' hilarious. Also got Loviet. She's going to be on the Saturday as well. And I've got one or two more acts that I haven't thrown out there yet. Cool. So we're going to announce more of that a little bit later. Yeah. But the, f- the f- most fun thing about it is just the community that's going to be there. It's like, it's not one of your typical festivals where you're just, you know, you're in the pit and there's security around being arseholes to you. It's, you're kind of free to roam the festival grounds. There's a beach there. We're going to have some volleyball set up. Uh, cornhole. Or shirt toss. Uh, beach volleyball. Like, stuff like that. And a big communal jam is going to happen on the Friday night. Awesome. If the fires are on taking control by then we're gonna have a bonfire but like there's a, some serious stuff going on and yeah yeah area, that's, so. that's a remains to be seen over the next few months yeah so, so that's yeah. all up in the air right now but i'm hoping that that will get better by then obviously i'm working on a concept on how to have a fire without a fire so we can still have campfires but i, I haven't quite nailed it screen tv and just 
get one of those oh, campfire. Yeah. Like, I figured campfire. lights, and just down the road you can buy the smoke grenades. I did one with Dakota, so you just throw a couple of those in there maybe oh, yeah, and just yeah. have the smoke and some lights. You could probably get it going for a few minutes anyway, create some effect. Yeah, see, I don't like the smoke things, especially yeah. smoke machines. Yeah, yeah, usually yeah. If there's, like, on stage, even at, like, big festivals, I'm the one that's usually going behind and unplugging them. Oh, really? I, They're hard to sing. I have to sit and, like, usually they're right by the drums yeah. on the drum riser, right? Yeah. The wind blows. I'm just like, all right, this is, this sucks. So I, I'm usually in the front row of the stage inhaling Getting it, the it yeah. yeah. See, it's one of the toughest things for your throat. And for me, like, we don't you normally do two, like, short shows. So I'm like, we play a straight set that could be upwards of three hours. I played a four-hour show the other night straight. I'm like, I just need to be drinking all that fluid, and the, the smoke is not great. That's why I don't smoke cigarettes, and I'm very low on the joint intake. I'll do it if I'm like, don't have any edibles or anything fun, you know. Sure. But if I need to get, need to get a little bit out, out of my own head, a joint every once in a while is fine. But no cigarettes for no the. No cigarettes. You got to keep the vocals. Well, yeah. Clean too. Well, That's why I don't sing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mark smokes <laughs> enough for the whole band. Yeah. I um. Yeah, like, my style of singing is a bit everywhere, so I got to go from super soft to, like, screaming my head off. So it's it's a delicate thing, the voice, and I don't want to ruin it by just, you know, smoking. Although, there's sometimes where I feel like I could smoke a pack of cigarettes that I'm that stressed. I'm sure. And that's that's the joys of playing in a band that we're just trying to, you know, do our thing, and there's so many obstacles in the way, and things... Things tend to make themselves work out, but it's that initial stress that you're like, how are we going to figure stuff out? Well, you've been doing a lot of solo shows the last few months, too, so yeah. you see like you're ripping up and down the highway quite a bit. Yeah, I'm on the road. So it's exciting to hear you guys going out on the road as a full group, yeah, because but- I think the anecdotes when you get back are going to be quite oh good. Oh, my God. They, they usually are. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like... Touring is honestly the funnest part of being in a band. It's it sucks while it's happening. I was watching this tour documentary. It's like two and a half hours. It's like most of the time, like the guys, you know, stuff's happening at home and you can't really get to it. There might be an issue, but we're all there. We're there to help each other. We're not gonna go down each other's throat. Knock on wood. We haven't really had too many like altercations with each other on the road. We're all pretty understanding. There's been like close times. Me and Travis will bicker a little bit. But there hasn't been times where, like, you know what I mean, we've come to fisticuffs and... Smile and nod. Yeah. It's, <laughs> like, some stuff is stressful, but we understand that we're stuck on the road together for some oh, time. Oh, yeah. And you guys have been together for quite a few years yeah, now, so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're closing in on a decade pretty quickly. and three-piece for eight years. We had John for three almost five. No, we're three-piece for three years. No, I mean, like, we've been... We've been, there's three of us for the past eight years. Oh. For the past five, there's been uh, almost five. John joined up. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's one of those things, like, I, you couldn't do life without it. Once you've got that core together, it's like, how do I go on with life without playing in a band? Yeah. Like, I don't understand how people do it. And just that whole brotherhood and you got each other's back. I understand the whole biker thing now. It's like, I got your back. You got my back. If you're down, we're down with you. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. It's just one of those things where you kind of, you're in it for the common goal. And our band's a bit different than your regular band. We're like, we're not a band of hired guns or like just people coming in every once in a while. It's like all for one, one for all kind of thing. And we all, we all have the same, same picture and we're ready to just take on the world together. And you did mention Why Go playing at Giant Stock. Yeah. So when they were just on, they did have a conversation with me. We talked about your podcast right. that's kind of a cross promotion with that as well. Yeah. And they have not yet been on. So they said if I'm talking to you Let's set up you a know, date. they're they're ready to go. So Well I should probably I, see maybe I, tomorrow. You should probably talk to Mark, see if he could arrange it for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey Mark, can you can you get your clients to get a hold of me, brother? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, like maybe like tomorrow, sometime, like for an hour. Get there, he's going right now. See, we're going to set Absolutely. up an interview. We're getting Darcy things done. and Mark making things happen. So I Absolutely. need to get something. I've been uh, I've been insanely busy with emailing for the tour lately. So I took last week off the podcast. The thing with my podcast is more or less not structured for every week. 
like yours is insane. You've got such a wide array of it's music a, there's, happening and there's no coke involved just for just the a record. lot of hard, yeah, right. hard work darcy puts in some time at this there's a, there's a lot of days with not much sleep no that's, exactly that's about it yeah it's it's a thing it's like a, for me it's like a passion project it's like if i have a something I'm like oh, i'll just message this person and i've always wanted to do that i've always liked like the talk show kind of vibe like when I'm an old an old fella, maybe off the road, I'll do like a late night with Andre Pettipaw. Yeah, that's, absolutely. <laughs> that's my dream. But maybe it'd be weird because I'd want to play in the house band too. You could be <laughs> late late night with the show. Giants featuring Andre Pettipaw and you're the band. <laughs> all right. And it's all of them or the hosts. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, but when we're old as shit, like when after we do our country record when we're like 65... Yes, that's that's the, that, that's the retirement plan. You're going to release a country album as your final album. I together. want a jazz fusion, but oh, there you go. But none of us like jazz, so you just wait. It's you it's find the right one. That's been a common theme in a lot of the interviews lately. Is that there's a lot of jazz influence coming up out of the people that have been taking music programs around Nova Scotia. So a lot of the bands are starting to put a lot more jazz cool. into their sound. So I wasn't uh, I wasn't smart enough for jazz. So yeah, it's, it's fair too enough. much math. Three chords in the truth, man. Or four, I don't know what this thing is. And if you play something wrong, play it again the second time wrong, and then call it jazz. There you go, perfect. The, the cop out. Oh, God. And so since I have you here, Mark, I might as well ask you to, for the fact that you do do recordings down at Shoebox, yeah. is there any other bands that you want to give a shout-out to that besides maybe some of the ones we already mentioned that are Giant Stock, is there anyone else that... We should be watching for on the podcast and around the scene here lately, or it's a little too early to announce anything. I, some of them are a little bit too early to announce. Sure. Uh, well, Wygo just finished up their uh, their EP. Um, they just had to release their last weekend, and for that was for um, physical copy only. They'll be releasing the first single for that mid June. Um, or I guess early June, and then the rest of the album is going to go up, or the rest of the EP, sorry, is going to go up onto uh, streaming platforms in the middle of June. Um, other than that, other, yeah, in the studio, Sweet Serene's back in. Sweet. Um, they're doing a few more. Uh, yeah. So you'll be able to catch those guys this year at a bunch of different festivals and stuff, as well as Giant Stock. So, um, yeah, I think there's other ones that are kind of maybe just a little bit too early to we'll keep announce. An eye I'll, out. I'll let the bands announce them and then yeah. go from there. So Perfect. But well, it's, it's feel free steady. to send them our way. Oh, always. And yeah. we should give a shout out to Landon, who was seen in yes. some of the clips there doing some of the camera work. And he our was bud, Landon Morris, uh, also known as Gardner. Yes. Terrific, terrific dude. Just A1 dude, great musician. Um, he's got all the tools to have a successful career in music. Absolutely. And he's, he's on his way up. He's... He's just got the right, right approach with everything, and he's smart, I guess, with uh, especially with his graphics and his DIY attitude. Yeah, I think that's the most crucial thing for um, up and coming musicians is to make sure you know how to do some of that stuff yourself. We take care of a lot of stuff in house, and it saves us a lot of money and a lot of just resources that you have to go out and outsource and waiting. Yeah. So if you can whip it up yourself, it's like, all right, this is huge. And we're actually playing a show with Landon for our uh, tour fundraiser happening. Well, it'd be probably last Friday by the time this yes. is out. So at the uh, East Coast Credit Union Social Enterprise Center, the Legion. Awesome. Which what, So that's this Friday yeah. as of recording? So, yeah, it may be. Days. And then, um, then I got to do a show in Cape Breton that, the next night. Then we rehearse, pack the stuff up Sunday. We got to be in for uh, load in in Montreal at like 4 p.m. the next day. So we'll leave. We'll probably leave at like 7 or 8 that night, drive until 4 in the morning, take a quick little nap, get into our Airbnb, load stuff in our, uh, our bags and stuff, and then go set up, wait till 10 o'clock till we have to play. So you guys need to get some rest because you've got a busy schedule leading up to it. We do, and yeah. And then you're full tilt for like a good couple months. No rest for the wicked thing. Yeah. <laughs> we do it because we love it. There's a lot of stress behind it, but at the end of the day, when you make something work and you just make it happen, and especially a labor of love, like something you're so passionate about, it just when it comes to fruition, it's like, shit, boys, we did this. 
it's it's just seeing it's been almost a year since we started recording our upcoming album like we were getting it'll be like two weeks from now we started recording it and it's like it's almost out there and it seems you're waiting so freaking long and then the release sneaks up on you the last few weeks it's like oh god we gotta let these this out to the world what are they gonna think say, it feels like we just recorded it right yeah we were like it was the best experience of our life like we were at the Trash Play really Hip Studio for a couple days and just hanging with the boys there. And then we had Brian fly into Shoebox, spent the week with him there and got some cool ass tones, a lot of fuzz guitar. And then I did a lot of the uh, harmonies in my basement on times where my vocals were strong. It's just, it's kind of cool to just have like a full, here, we're using this. We're going to go here first. We're going to go to Shoebox second. And then we can do any vocal comps at Shoebox. I went in and me and Ian sat down and went through the parts we liked. It was a lot of hands-on for this project where it's, we kind of got to choose what we wanted with the help of Ian. He was always up for that kind of assistance. And Brian was great to work with, as always. So it's to me, it's our, it's our most accurate representation of what the band is going forward. It really shows growth from the following out al- or the previous album, and it's something that I think uh, hopefully will change our lives for the better. Any more live recordings coming while you're doing all these tours now? Because you have this tour, then coming back, and then doing the album tour. So right. Um, well, Giant Stock might have some multi track, and we'll see. Well, there you go. I'd That's like to do a compilation, a yearly compilation of Giant Stock stuff, like. Family Values Tour 99. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do it as Giants Doc. Travis can be the baby on the front with the shitty airs. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm going to be bugging Mark about this idea because I, I like right. this idea. I want, I want to hear some recordings from that afterwards. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, so, something to get I people through get, the winter because you guys right. are doing all summer and then kind of capping off the summer. Then we're going into the fall. And but we're going, across, we're going across the country again <laughs> in September. Oh, wow. That's the boys impressive. are ready to be touring musicians, so... We're already starting to book our second Cross Canada tour in six months. Wow. And um, then we're going to look to dive into the States after that. Wow. You heard it here first, and I also heard it here first. <laughs> and do we be, do you, you're going to make sure that you're back for Music Nova Scotia for Music Week in November? Yeah, we'll, we'll be back for then. And then we've got a, another show that we're going to announce that's around here around that time, too. So we've got like a, a two-week window where we've got to be home. And then maybe hit the road again. So where should people... Oh, oh, there you go. It's it's like super inside baseball here today. Yeah. yeah. Well, so where should people follow you guys online to get the up-to-date information? So the know? most, like, we're most active on Instagram, at APM the Giants is the super easy. But uh, com. that'll have all our hyperlinks there. And for a hyper guy like myself, it's easy to just keep everything into one place right there. Oh, that was bad. His, his pun game, he's, he's... Oh, three weeks on the road. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm wondering how that works out. And I've, I've I mean, did I a couple a, quick trips, but... I'm mean, going to have a freaking tally, I think, in the back of the band, every shitty pun. Yeah, I, I'm loving it. The boys are suckers for punishment. Oh, Snap. <laughs> With that, maybe we should just call it a day. I, th- I think we quit while I like we're it, ahead. Darcy. We got a good one there. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us, me this afternoon. And uh, everybody, keep an eye out for the album and have a link to the music video somewhere here on the screen. Right. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. <laughs> Travis's <laughs> legs had to get a good shot. I wish that I would have thought of that idea first, what? and then I could wear shorts on stage without feeling like a dummy. Hey, there, see, give me a hand. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> My God, yeah. I can't even bring. Yeah, how, how long did he? Uh, oh, he wanted to get it done as soon as they drove, drove him home. He was like, he called my cousin. 
who doesn't hairdress anymore, but she's got stuff at her house. He went over there within 20 minutes. I was like, Kyle or Deccan will do it tomorrow. He's like, man, I can't take that risk. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I got to get a trim before we go. I'll give you a bowl cut if you... Oh, come on, do it. I would have made you a deal and kept the mustache. Oh, of course, I wouldn't want to fight. Was he asking for money, was he? There's the blooper. They're hitting the door, kicking over the can. See, this this yeah. seam turned out friggin' just how I wanted it to. Yeah. See, this, this is what's funny, like, you kind of get the idea going, and then it goes into fruition, and someone kicks over the bucket. Not my idea of kicking the bucket, but... I like how long it took us to figure out how to spell intellectual. <laughs> three, I think it was three times before I had it spelled right on the uh, promo picture. That ball is no longer a working ball, either. What? Well, I took it home, left it outside for the night, Oh, well, darling got, your first got into it. So she's got a she's happy as hell with her new basketball. That's pretty great. We named it Spalding. Of course. It's, it's, it doesn't have hair anymore. It's Spalding. <laughs> this shirt, I'm kind of I'm kind of choked. Logan got the t-shirt and the jacket from the video. He didn't want this shirt, but I'm like you got to have that. Oh, he has to have the shirt. He wanted the jacket. He's like Is this like could I have this jacket? Wait, is that not how you spell English? <laughs> I died when I seen you come out with that freaking outfit. <laughs> with the meter stick? Uh, uh, uh. I like how I snapped the meter stick. We didn't even use that clip. Yeah. Look at this. That is such a classic kid move. I should have used some of that. <laughs> this is great. What scene is that? <laughs> that was behind the scenes messing around. This is Darcy's uh, skateboarding behind the scenes. Are you a behind the scene kid? Yeah. <laughs> I think that having this place was like so easy to just corral everyone and it's like, here, go into the gym and shoot hoops and do whatever while we shoot all these random ass scenes. I think, like, I like how we all looked super ridiculous. <laughs> Except me. And, and you look <laughs> handsome. <laughs> oh, here, let me just put on my black blazer and this leather jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I had to be a dweeb in my past life, yeah. so I figured I'd work my future self out to be like, okay, here's the come up. You're still a dweeb, though. I know. Once a dweeb, always a dweeb. We should probably like put like dweeb for life t-shirts, like the NWO for life. i got to think of some kind of dweeb. Maybe just the definition on the t-shirts. That'd be cool. I think that would look clean, and then we'll just throw our logo on the back like... Or I guess the logo's on the front of it anyway. The logo's on the front, yeah. The uh, parental advisory. Yeah. The boys. The Koshella shirt. See, he's got the Koshella shirt on. I've got a Slow Coaster t-shirt. That was an Easter egg for Giant Stock. I actually got a Koshella shirt now, too. You got one, did you? Yeah. What did you wear here? Just a sweater vest? Yeah. Where did you get it? The sweater vest? Yeah. Velou Village. French boutique. French boutique. Servicing all your uh, discount needs. Look at that Let's outfit. Calm it down that stash. <laughs> <laughs> that stash is no more. Yeah, I was surprised you shaved it. What was the? Uh, did you grow it for the video? No, I grew it just because I wanted to bring it back. And then you didn't want to bring it back? No. Well, I did. It was. What happened was I was jumping in the shower. Yeah. And uh, I was getting out all my, my stuff. Like, I was getting out, like, the shampoo I used just oh, for the yeah. mustache. And I was getting out the uh, the little scissors for afterwards. And Trimming then, it so and it then the, over your lip. Yeah, and then the paste for it first, and then the wax. And then as I was, like, getting it all ready, I was like, fuck this. And I just shaved it off. Really? 
Man, I've been getting long. like food in mind. <laughs> Specifically Boston or coconut cream donut sauce. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, crap, maybe I should shave it, but I guess it's a part of me. I'm like I don't know. I mean there there's there was too much mustache in the band. Oh yeah. So I, I had to shave mine off. Well Travis shaved his too, I think. Probably. You, but you never know. Travis could show up with a friggin' mullet and not think twice. I hope so. He should. What do you think? Do you think he should have a mullet? Uh, absolutely. I think that that's a, a tour thing. Oh. Petition to give Travis a mullet on tour. Oh, he, yeah. He just got his yeah. hair dyed. Like, Yeah, he did. Oh, man, I'd go for a silly haircut, but I just got a fresh one. I got a hat on just because it's sunny, but... I could go for a haircut in general. A high school one? Or do? No, I assume what you're doing. 